We know that great apes are our closest living relatives. We share lots of genes, a very recent common ancestor. But you look at the body shape of these two and you see a number of different things. Certainly the gorilla has huge long arms, shorter legs, grasping feet. But if you look at the torso right here in the middle, you can see it's got this big long pelvis, almost no lower back, cone-shaped rib, the big block of a torso here. Whereas we have a barrel-shaped rib cage, a nice long spine, a flexible waist that we use when we walk around, and a short pelvis. And these differences happened somewhere, sometime in our evolution, and actually have important implications. So why are apes built the way they are? Well, apes move about the world in a very different way than we do. We walk around, of course, upright on two feet. It's called bipedal locomotion. And an ape does things differently. Apes primarily are hanging in the trees. They eat ripe fruits. Fruits grow on the ends of branches. Apes tend to be big animals. So how do they get to small branches? As they hang below them. They distribute their weight over lots of different supports. They hang below the branches, and they can do what they need to do. To do that, they have a very stiff torso here, and they have a narrow rib cage at the top, which allows them to reach their hands very efficiently up over the heads when they're hanging and climbing. But as a consequence of having these big, long climbing arms, they have to walk on a very funny way where on the ground, big, long arms, they can't really stand up straight, and they don't walk around that way. So somehow, this is a real difference that we need to explain by looking at the fossil record. If you look at the torso, it hasn't really been studied very much, even though there's so much shape difference. Why? Well, it's made up of a lot of different bones, and when you go to a museum, they're all in a pile in a drawer, and you can't really see very well how they're put together. Also, they tend to be very fragile, and they don't show up nearly as often in the fossil record as things like teeth, which are hard, and they fossilize much more easily. But fortunately, we're learning more about them. But just recently, maybe as recently as 20, 30 years ago, our ideas weren't so good. And so this is the same sort of picture you saw before. We have a chimpanzee torso and a human. We've gotten rid of those pesky limbs. We don't need to talk about them today. And if you go up in almost any anthropology textbook, this is what you'll see Lucy look like. This is what Australopithecus torso looks like. It's got a short pelvis, which looks a lot like a human, which is related to upright bipedal locomotion. I'm not going to discuss that really today, but I'm happy to discuss it in question and answers. But if you look at the rib cage here, it's shaped like a cone, like this chimpanzee. And this is what we think Lucy looked like. Well, who cares? Well, here's why we care. This is the same reconstruction done in 3D. This is an old skeleton, or an older reconstruction of skeleton um, from the Cleveland Museum done in the past. And when you do this, and you imagine with your eye sort of what this animal would look like put together, you imagine a shape sort of like this gorilla here, with this big pot belly, if you sort of connect the dots here, not much of a waist, a very different sort of a shape than you would see in you or me. This is important not just to get a vision in our heads of what Australopithecus might have looked like, but it has implications. If this was their shape, maybe it means she had a really large gut and ate difficult food. That's been discussed in the literature. Maybe did she have a waist? A waist is something we use when we walk. According to that reconstruction, there's not much of a waist. Could she move her hips when she walked? Not if she had a shape like that. Was she shaped like an ape? Would she have looked like that? Was she shaped like us? And what does all of this mean for our origins? If that's really what Australopithecus looked like, we have a very different kind of an animal than you or I. Or you or me, I should say. Well, fortunately, the fossil record has been good to us. And people like Zarai have been working diligently in finding some terrific new fossil skeletons, a lot of which have parts of the torso.